I can hardly contain myself because today we go in depth on the Nullarbor Plain in Australia. So this video will only be talking about the Nullarbor Plain and associated uh, tangents and uh, some points I want to make on this. And the cliff notes to start out is that the Nullarbor Plain does not appear to bear many signs from Google Earth, at least in the areas I've looked, um, of shearing over or sheared flatness, other than its appearance um, of being flat. But uh, I can't say it bears a whole lot of uh, markings on the landscape, other than a couple things I will show. However, there are some potentially fishy facts um, with uh, and aspects of uh, some of the features of the Nullarbor, or uh, I guess the Aussies would say Nullaba. Um, so some of the caves and stuff are a little weird, some of the artifacts, so we will discuss some of that. And first up, we will do a little uh, get to know you of the Nullarbor plane. And I put together a little slideshow, so let's get into that. So here it is in Australia, this red area. And right here, it is approximately 77,000 square miles. And at its widest point, it's about 650, 700 miles, depending on where you uh, measure from. So a pretty big flat thing. And the word means no tree and they call it the treeless, uh, treeless plain for obvious reasons. There aren't many trees to look at. It's just kind of like dirt and bushes and limestone. The terrain is flat, almost treeless, nearly featureless. This made navigation difficult for early explorers. Very few people live here, almost uninhabited. So almost no people living on the Nullarbor, not particularly hospitable. Uh, so here you get a general view of the landscape, just kind of flat nothingness. A lot of uh, early travelers described it as like hellish or like what hell would be like. Um, just fun factoid there. Uh, another look here. A couple different looks. Just some different views just to get a feel for it as we start out here. And here you can see the rock. Can't, I can't really honestly say it looks fake or anything like that. I think it's um, likely natural uh, to begin with, if it's even if there's even an artificial component at all. So, I mean, who knows? Okay, uh, it's the world's largest single exposure of limestone bedrock. So this is all limestone basically the whole plane is basically a big limestone slab and there's five distinct layers of limestone here you can see a couple of them blah 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 and it's a former shallow seabed and we know that because there are these uh, life forms these little skeletons in the limestone and the seabed was uplifted during the miocene period and since then, erosion by wind and rain has reduced its thickness. I don't know about this last sentence. Like, would it reduce it uniformly? Like, keeping it, like, perfectly flat? Um, would the, uh, the wind and rain reduce the thickness uniformly on top? Uh, it just seems a little, a little odd. But uh, maybe my instinct is off. Uh, what did I want to say? Bedrock. I can't remember. Whatever. Um, but yeah, just a big limestone slab. And a few different looks at it. At the cliffs. These are called the Bunda Cliffs, I think. And it's like the long or one of the longest uninterrupt uninterrupted cliff lines. Uh, for what whatever that's worth. Um, pretty cool. Few different looks here. You see the different limestone layers and the very flatness of it. Flat limestone. So we're not seeing obviously any uh, artificial markings or anything. 
like I talk about or speculate on just looks like cliffs, you know? <laughs> so is what it is. Uh, we're just we're just still um, going over these images just to get a feel for the place and then we'll discuss a few potentially weird aspects of it um, as we go along. Okay, so more cliffs here and I'll zoom in just to give you a good feel for the rock type and what it looks like. Okay. Dur -dur -dur. There it is. Just rocks. Awesome. Okay. And according to conventional theory, the bite or coastline more or less came into existence when Gondwana, which is this mega continent, broke apart and separated Antarctica from Australia around 50 million years ago. And um, this presupposes a round earth, and I, I can't say I have any strong opinions on the matter. I'm kind of like, it's whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, is whatever it is. And my opinion doesn't matter too much. Um, but uh, anyways, this, uh, this coast here is allegedly part of, um, or used to be in contact with uh, Antarctica. We're just going over some conventional theory here. It has a desert climate with arid to semi-arid conditions, very little rainfall and high evaporation rates. So typical desert temperatures range on the plains from very hot to very cold. Uh, hot summer days, cold winter nights, again, typical of a desert. And just a decent look at it here. A flat flatness and bushes and not much. This is about as big as human settlement gets on the plain. It's probably just a, a truck stop. And then another look here, just grass and kangaroos and shit. Nice rainbow. Despite popular conceptions of the Nullarbor being an empty desert void of vegetation, a wide range of flora and fauna are observed. So yeah, there's kangaroos, wombats and stuff, and in the caves there's, you know, bats and whatever. Uh, yeah, we don't see much trees, but then some parts of the plain look different than others. Uh, like there are parts that have trees going on, so most of it most of what I've looked at just kind of looks like this, small bushes and rocks and dirt, almost perfectly flat. And yeah, and then here's one of the more uh, greener areas, or it might just vary by season. And these may be bushes, not trees, kind of hard to tell, but uh, there are some places with trees. I, I, I mean, that's kind of irrelevant. I'm just going over some f facts. Again, this is like a little get to know you of the area. Uh, soils are classified mainly as consisting of aridisols. Uh, I can't remember what that is, but just a type of soil in presumably an arid environment. This is what it looks like. And a comparison of different soil types. I realize I haven't talked too much in uh, the tooling of earth so far in my videos about like soil type and and rock type um, a whole lot uh, I probably should touch on it uh, more often um, but just a general view here of different soil types and if we are hypothesizing that something went and dropped a bunch of uh, like plopped a bunch of land on places artificially or alternatively sculpted those areas artificially or some weird thing like that, then uh, soil study is relevant to that. And I haven't done a whole lot of soil study, um, but th these are, you know, just, just for reference, soils, blah, blah, blah. And I thought it would be interesting to look at maps like this, um, the distribution of soil types. 
like if we're talking about the tooling of the whole earth or much of earth like resurfacing of some kind then we might observe some anomalies in distributions um, of soil type and rock type and stuff like that I mean I could I could envision all of these uh, patterns or distributions being completely natural or artificial I mean they don't look artificial certainly they just kind of look like an organic kind of haphazard mess like nature does um, but just thought it, it's an interesting line of inquiry that I haven't really touched on too much um, soil moisture regimes so these things here distributed uh, this is a brief tangent by the way just uh, and it's an interesting discussion I think um, yeah, I mean, not terribly informative, but we might see some correlation between these uh, soil types or um, crust types and, uh, and the, the tooling project we're talking about on this channel. Um, but I can't say I see anything like any like right angles or anything in, in <laughs> uh, uh, soil distribution so just trying to be forthcoming about that and lastly this map of the US some, uh, soil, soil regimes again nothing particularly indicative of artificial shizzle um, yeah whatever okay so back to the Nullar Bore. Uh, the Nullar Bore is a great example of a karst region. It has no surface drainage, but rather a karst drainage sy system through caves in the underlying limestone. So karst is basically just like a spongy landscape, like uh, holes and caverns and cavities in the rock. So that's this is an example of that. There's lots of caves. Um, Lots of hollowed out areas where the lime there's no limestone or like uh, bare spots I guess uh, I mean cave most of the landscape is flat except for the surface has collapsed into the sinkholes into sinkholes revealing large underground caverns there's a great variety of cave types under the nullar bore and very flat we've got some sinkholes and big big old caves so do I think this is like fake limestone? I should address that. Um, like just deposited there artificially? I think that's possible. I don't know how likely that is, at least in this place. I mean, I'll say that it looks almost entirely natural in appearance from what I've seen. So. I can't uh, say with too much confidence that I think it's artificial, like the whole plane. And when I say artificial, am I saying like a natural plane that was artificially edited? Or am I talking about a an artificial plane, uh, like the whole, the, the ground itself is artificially deposited? Um, on top of what that's yeah another question but um, I think if there is any aspect of like sheared flat you know the whole the whole landscape was blazed over and re reset and resurfaced and made mostly flat if that did happen then I think my best guess is that it happened to a pre-existing natural uh, limestone, uh, um, seabed or, uh, plane. So I've, I guess my best guess is that the null arbor is mostly natural with potential artificial editing done to it. Um, but then again, there are some fishy details we'll talk about uh, coming up, including like mounds, ring mounds around some of these caves. So that may be one of those clue type things. Um, uh, 
yeah, I, again, I guess just to summarize, I'll say I don't really have any super strong uh, examples or opinions on the uh, artificiality conversation here. It's just, it's very flat and it's possible that it's artificially made so somehow. Okay, let's continue. So here's some of the caves, uh, what they look like. Just a big gaping hole. Um, strong chance that that is natural. And then there's also underwater lakes and rivers and tunnels in the karst system. The uh, just the spongy limestone environment down there. Uh, and for example, uh, just as a little case study in one of these caves, uh, the old homestead cave, one of Australia's longest cave systems yet discovered, comprises about 34 kilometers of known tunnels and chambers across four levels. So it's pretty long, 34 kilometers. These are filled with stalactites and stalagmites, smooth flowstone, and the occasional curling tendrils of gypsum crystals that grow out from the walls. So we'll look at some of that business. So obviously looking natural, not artificial. Um, I don't know if these images are from the actual old homestead cave, but it's these are from uh, some cave on a, uh, in the Nullarbor. I know that for sure. So uh, we've got, yeah, the stalactites and stalagmites. I would say this is a good indicator of age, of the age of the, the Nullarbor plane, you know, just the, the size of the stalactites and stalagmites. I don't know how to date them, but I'm sure it's a decent indicator. Um, I'm, I mean, on the other hand, I am almost certain that if we put our minds to it, we could create such an environment artificially if we wanted to with sufficient knowledge and sufficient uh, high tech and resources. Um, not saying that's what was done, but just acknowledging the possibility. My best guess is these are indeed natural stalagmites and stalactites. Uh, and then there's this business, just rocks and caves and stuff. Just giving you a feel for it. And in areas, the ocean blows through caves and tunnels, resulting in blowholes up to several hundred meters from the coast. So here's a blowhole. See a couple of them. And I'm not seeing any like associated artificial markings or anything um, or like the vehicle tracks or anything. I don't see any of that nearby. Although I haven't really gotten a, a detailed look of the surrounding area around these blowholes. But um, I mean, I guess if I, if I were feeling sloppy, I, I could say this is like some type of track or something, but the resolution's too low. So fortunately, we're not gonna get much of a good idea. Um, and this is like a sinkhole type thing, blowhole, sinkhole. So uh, I guess to summarize on these, they look natural. There's a chance that they're artificial, but I don't have any strong evidence for that at this point. Um, okay, fossils. So uh, so would there be fossils? I this is another thing I haven't really talked ab talked about much in like the whole series so far, um, the tooling of Earth. Um, I. So I suppose I should have addressed it more again, but uh, fossils. So uh, obviously if places are fake or, uh, or artificially edited, then what do we do with fossils and how did they get there, you know? So I guess at this point I'll uh, restate the, p the possibility that uh, it's uh, organic long time scales uh, with um, in addition to uh, artificial editing so I mean I could I could see fossils being either planted or natural or both depending on the case um, so 
there, there's a chance that some fossils are placed there like misleading, misleadingly in some places around the earth, like falsely planted evidence. And then um, I think most fossils are likely like legit dead animals. Um, I don't know how helpful that is, but just considering different possibilities. Okay, so fossils on the Nullarbor. Um, Trevor, treasure trove of about of fossils up to a million years old has been found in three caves under the Nullarbor. So we have this bird. What else we got? We got some uh, femurs or jaws and stuff. Flight Star Cave. And these are just sitting there, like not particularly fossilized. So these may not be very old. Uh, lion and this plant thingy fossilized in the limestone. And there are these little skeletons in the limestone uh, all throughout the Nullarbor. So that could, again, that could be like a sophisticated type of um, mimicry, or that could also be uh, just like the conventional theory is true. Like it's a uh, old seabed and blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah. Okay. Also we have meteorites on the Nullarbor. That's another aspect worth discussing. So the Nullarbor is known for extensive meteorite deposits, which are extremely well preserved in the arid climate. Some are up to several tons in weight and most of them look like this from what I gather. Uh, just kind of like chunks of mostly iron and this is the Mundrabilla meteorite a lump of iron weighs 11 tons here it is it's pretty huge and I think that one was dug up and then this one is just chilling out on the surface rabbit for scale and you see how big this is just a big chunk of iron so do I think meteorites are planted? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I don't know. I think it's possible, certainly. I mean, uh, I mean, if some super, super, super computer had to create some heterogeneous distribution of rocks to mimic an organic pattern, then you might expect it to include all kinds of rocks. Um, and, and then also, uh, acknowledging the, uh, the planet in a jar theory, uh, possibility. So the idea that, uh, or I guess like the snow globe, but something which like is kind of like, um, has organic flows within it. So it is like a living system or comprised of living systems and organic mineral systems and all that, obviously, but it may be enclosed like, uh, either in a sphere or a, a dome or something like that. And then, uh, and then these, uh, these organic processes like circulate material, like from the bottom of the snow globe to the top of the snow globe. So like maybe meteorites are like, rec like, uh, recycled material, which gets plopped out of the bottom of the earth and like rained down from above in some slow organic process within a confined system. <laughs> I mean, I don't subscribe to that idea, but I think it's an interesting possibility. Uh, just worth acknowledging. Um, to date, many thousands of specimens from about 332 distinct meteorites have been described from the whole Nullar Bohr region. I would just, and this is one of them right here, uh, clearly distinguishable from the, the limestone which is white. And I would just say, just because a stone has a, a different composition and um, certain chemical signatures and all that, doesn't mean it's a meteorite. Like, we don't know that for certain. Like there's iron and whatever else. And okay, so there's like 332 different motifs or um, types of these uh, rocks or var variants of this rock composition, but we can't guarantee that that means it's from a meteorite. Um, 
yeah, I think that is clear. Uh, this some type of slab of meteorite. Um, many meteorites are easy to spot just sitting on the surface. Just chilling out there. This guy found one. Here's another one. And uh, so there's a possibility that the meteorites are just like sprinkled on the surface, like just as garnish, you know, like you would sprinkle salt or pepper on your food. I've considered that possibility just because they're like chilling out here on the surface. So is it like for effect, you know, like a finishing touch um, to, to add richness to the, the story, the backstory of this environment? Um, I mean, if Earth is a big deception, then is that, does that really sound so far fetched? Um, it's just a possibility. Again, they might be real meteorites. Uh, I'm just uh, considering different angles of all of this. Okay. Um, and I wanted to compare these meteorites with uh, this glass, greenish yellow glass, which is found in Egypt and I think Libya as well. And again, it's just chilling out here on the surface and there's tons of it. It's just like right on top of the sand, just chilling. So it's as if it was recently like just dumped here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just like, so maybe the nuller bore is natural and then like, uh, shit, I don't know, uh, part, like the top part of it was shaved off or something and then re, uh, like repopulated with rocks and meteorites and bushes and stuff. Uh, it's possible. Uh, I just, I, it, it just reminded me of it. Just the clearly definable meteorites sitting on the surface. Then there's the, uh, the clearly uh, visible glass rock things. Uh, some have called it like nuclear glass, potentially in Egypt here. It's just chunks of greenish yellow glass chilling out in the open and there's tons and tons and tons of it. So here's the general landscape and uh, each one of these arrows, I guess, is pointing to a piece of glass and it's just rocks. So I, I think there's a strong chance that deserts in general, like, and, and it may be the rule more than the exception, uh, that deserts may be like just artificially created, like just sand dumped on an area just because it's an easy way to, <laughs> To make a, to re reset an area, if that's what you want to do, or maybe you want to have desert adventures, so you create a desert so you can have that adventure. Uh, but yeah, these these glass fragments just sitting here. So wondering if these were just sprinkled on the landscape, kind of like the meteorites on the Miller bore. It's possible. It is possible. Uh, the Nullarbor is home to civilization's oldest artifacts. Stone tools, wall paintings, etc. Up to 40,000 years old. So the Aboriginal people and uh, the like have these stone tools. Uh, flint and whatever types of stone. Uh, just these handheld tools, and apparently they're pretty old. Um, and then we also have this stuff called uh, fluting. It's like curvaceous, um, uh, wavy, squiggly patterns. And this is uh, s kind of a, at least um, a little bit raises an eyebrow for me, or uh, it's almost a red flag. Like, because uh, we've seen stuff like this on a lot of petroglyphs, just like kind of gibberish and the, the pattern soup idea. And if you remember in Strange Patterns Part 4 of 3 Redux, I talked about a lot of these uh, spiral patterns and similar like maze type patterns and stuff like that and uh, variations on that. So this may be like pattern soup here. So a lot of the caves in the Nullarbor are lined with these 
fluting patterns. And the limestone in some spots is pretty soft, so you can just create these markings with your fingers. So that may explain um, some or most or even all of it. Um, uh, and then sticks are used to scratch into the harder surfaces, apparently. I just wonder if these markings are, uh, again, plants, like fake uh, historical backdrop, um, like planted there falsely. Part of the large design figure from Yaranda Cave. Okay, cool. Uh, this one is in Melangine Cave. Um, petroglyphs. Uh, and uh, just get a good look at this. Just kind of um, miscellaneous patterns, like not really depicting much. And this is consistent, I guess, with like the narrative of a a primitive man like exploring his creative side, his artistic and art abstract side, his expressive nature. Um, I would just say it is also uh, um, consistent with the idea of pattern soup or uh, <laughs> just symbols for, for their own sake, more or less. Um, so I can't say I know which one it is especially in any one given case like this particular one right here. Uh, I could obviously, I could see this being some dude with a stick just scratching stuff in just to pass the time. And I could also see it being um, part of a more uh, deceptive protocol that involves uh, lots of gibberishy lines and weird, uh, weird symbols and stuff. And I will be discussing that uh, whole angle more in an upcoming uh, series about uh, is history a plumbus? I'll be expounding on that. Um, it just I haven't gotten to it yet, so keep your uh, keep, stay tuned for that. Uh, okay, so more artifacts here. A hand like petroglyph uh, discovered one of the Mount Gambier cave art sites. So hand maybe. Uh, I could, again, I could go either way with it. Artificial gibberish, deceptive something, or actual handprint. Couldn't tell you. More of it here. Finger flutings in the Karaki cave. Uh, and the, the, cal the growth um, heavily modified by calcite precipitation. So the growth on this is some indicator of age, so that helps us somehow. I don't know how fast this whatever calcite crystallizes or grows or whatever, but we see these markings um, similar to some of the tool marks we've seen on stone and stuff, kind of. So that's why I discuss it here. That's why I bring it up. So, so I, I like again on the idea that uh, clues are left near each other uh, as a way of linking them. So like, are, is this left in these caves as a way of uh, kind of hinting that the cave itself is not legit? It's possible. I mean, I even, even I struggle with that. Uh, again, I could certainly see this be, just being a dude with like rubbing his hands on the walls or whatever. Um, or lady. Karaki style Petrogriffin Parung Cave near Mount Gambier. So all of these caves are uh, a dozen or a couple dozen caves at least have these markings. And so that one of the sp suspicious aspects of it is the extent of it. Like one of these caves has just like thousands of square meters of it are covered in these markings which is a little, uh, a little much, potentially. Um, then again, maybe not. If you were uh, just really bored and you were alive for 80 years as a uh, primitive bushman, um, then you might just do stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, just the... Uh, 
again, kind of resembling pattern soup to my eye. So just keeping that in mind. More of it here. Deep gas just superimposed over finger flutings. Carly and Gowen Pool Cave. Um, these lines kind of pseudo ordered or part partly ordered. So this would be like done with the fingers and then this is like, I don't know, done with sticks or something. Just patterns and patterns and patterns. Again, the extent of it and reminding me of a lot of archeological sites with weird um, streaks and lines and potentially phony tool marks. Um, so traces of chert mining uh, chert mining is just a type of uh, mining, just kind of like chiseling or whatever. Uh, and apparently the aboriginals mined silica and also flint in these caves. So uh, that may explain some of the markings we're seeing. Three convergent line motifs in that same cave. And... I don't know, could be just gibberish, could be legit. Um, maze or lattice dominated by circular patterns. Uh, Carlingon pool cave. So it's just a whole bunch of nonsensical things. So could that be a hint that the Nuller bore is bogus? I couldn't tell you, but it's possible. Um, yeah, just more of these. Uh, this may be that chert mining they're talking about. And this uh, groove, these grooves here. OK, and now let's, um, let's just look at a few caves and some of the uh, idiosyncrasies that each one has. Um, so this is Abrakuri Cave, and not much to see, just looks like a natural cave, more or less. And then it has these uh, handprints. This is another thing that's found fairly globally, so almost looks like just a cheap like spray paint around a hand, or, uh, you know, some dye held in the mouth and then blow you blow it out of the mouth and it leaves this uh, pattern here. Again, that, that is consistent with ma early man just exploring his creative side, but it also could be just like a, a weird um, false backdrop, like one, uh, one little rich idiosyncrasy to, to make the picture of Earth's false history more colorful, colorful, um, yeah, Murrowidgini Cave, this is this, and here it is, nice big shelf and hollow area underneath, and again, more of these hands, uh, same story, more or less, so could these be a, a clue or like a calling card? Yeah, could be a calling card. Here they are. Wee Bubby Cave. Mm, I was looking for signs of like any artificial stuff around the markings around the edge, but I can't say I really see anything. Just kind of a big hole. And it's got a nice big cavity underneath. I'm reminded of like Ponza Cave in the Ponza Caves in um, Italy. P-O-N-Z-A, if you want to look that up. Uh, just kind of like the smoothish uh, um, surfaces. Although those ones are more blatant and artificially carved, but this is more natural looking. Uh, uh, I mean, it looks looks fairly natural, so whatever's and there's more of it just underground river here pretty cool pretty cool and tunnel here uh okay so murrah ellen cave this may be the most interesting 
cave, I think. Just a couple images here. I couldn't find any really solid images or videos of this cave, but um, we noticed that it has these two rings around, and part of that is maybe to keep the public out, like there's a, a fence in one of the rings, but um, uh, I don't know, if you recall uh, Stonehenge, and uh, Stonehenge has, uh, bleh, I can't talk, uh, mounds around it, and uh, there's plenty of ring forts, as they're called, or mounds, like ring mounds around the world, and like England and stuff, so that's a, a common thing, and the whole Plumbus discussion is history of Plumbus, uh, just like weird uh, details. So I was thinking this could be a calling card here that's left around the cave. Uh, so if you just hit, we see like this little fence and um, this mound. So I don't think the mounds, it's, I mean, it's possible, but they don't strike me as modern, um, like maintenance or like a uh, park ranger or park, uh, National Park um, upkeep or, you know, just modern stuff like that. Um, and I think this last image shows it the best. So yeah, here we see these, uh, these ring mounds around this cave. And I think there's a possibility that it is um, just like weirdness, like, uh, like the serpent mound in o Ohio, and, uh, just like these, um, silly historical sites that are just like mounds in the ground, so, um, so there's any number of possibilities, obviously, it could be a natural cave, and then somebody, some very clever deceiver type, comes and puts uh, ring mounds around it to uh, get us to <laughs> go down some false rabbit hole or something. Um, or uh, it could be that the, the cave is bogus and the, the whole Nuller Bore plane is heavily modified somehow. And then this is like a calling card or a clue to let you know somehow or hint at it at least and then obviously it's possible that these are modern um for some reason i don't think that's particularly likely but i could be wrong there if you have more information on this uh particular cave uh post it in the comments it's called murrah ellen cave or at least according to someone's blog post uh, assuming their info is correct I googled it and I couldn't find like a Wikipedia article on this or anything so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to give you a definitive um, explanation for these mounds but I think there's a chance that they are a calling card and that they are trying to tell you something okay so Kunalda cave let's talk about this one just another big gaping hole in the ground. Cool, cool. The cave extends deep underground with a large system of tunnels and lakes branching out from the main chamber. Measures up to 122 meters wide, 76 meters high, 300 meters long. So, very large. And I was looking in this image for any like markings of the landscape, but I think most of the stuff we see is just going to be tire tracks. So. Unfortunately, no smoking guns here, as far as I can tell. And I can't say I saw anything like vehicle tracks in the stone or anything. So, whatever's um, good view of it from above. Just, yeah, looking pretty natural, just like a cave, you know. And oh, another good look there. And thousands of square meters of the cave walls are covered in patterns called flutings, which we've touched on. Um, so this, it's over 100 meters long, and um, 
and then I guess pretty high as well on the walls of the cave of these uh, abstract markings. And yeah, so this is what they look like. And a fluting again is a primitive finger marking and sticks or stick scratch. And it's made by dragging the fingers over soft powdery limestone surface, uh, which is called moon milk in some cases. Or, some types of uh, limestone. It's like build up on the limestone of just like soft powdery stuff. And then uh, sticks were apparently used on the harder limestone surfaces. So this is the look of it. And I could see this being made with fingers or something, some type of clever deception dealy bobber. I don't know. The patterns consist of abstract lines and shapes. There are also some pictographs of zoomorphic and human-like shapes. And I couldn't really find any images of those, like animals or, or people depicted. But uh, there you have it, just patterns and patterns. Could be anything. Here's some more in Kunal the cave. Just lines and lines and lines, lines and lines and lines, and created by the in indigenous Australians, allegedly. Um, and these markings are roughly 20,000 years old, making it older than any known prehistoric art in Europe. I can't verify that. That's just what this article said. So don't quote me on this older than Europe thing, but um, it's pretty old, apparently, and I don't quite know how they dated it, but um, assuming this is legit uh, tells us something. Um, markings are often termed art, although the reason for their creation is not fully understood. So I mean it's kind of artistic and it's it's like somewhere between like tool marks and artistic. Um, so this reminding me of some tool marks we've seen at megalithic sites. We'll take another look at this in a moment. So here, looking like plaster almost, like uh, kind of soft powdery um, stuff. And the seam in this wall is, uh, I don't know, just interesting looking. So just a general idea of what's going on there. We're getting to know the Nuller bore. And more lines here. Again, thousands of square meters of this in this cave alone. And it's it's almost uh I don't know if it's in all of the caves, but it's in many caves across the Nuller bore, which is again uh, hundreds of miles wide. So could be early man or something more weird. Uh, so these are some additional ones, curvilinear forms. So we've got these, these patterns, lines, curves, we've got this almost like a circle, uh, almost like the letter K. <laughs> uh, so pattern soup, maybe. Aboriginals also mine flint in this area for precision stone tools. And this is like apparently something called chert mining. Um, and I don't know if the indications of this uh, alleged chert mining are legit. I think those could be like fake as well. And I also think they could be legit. <laughs> and hopefully my uncertainty is not too annoying. Um, so this is an article I found that was uh, highlighting the similarity between the car uh, the carvings at Kunalda Cave on the Nullarbor Plain, and then uh, this cave in Ohio. So that's the other side of the world, United States. So there's this guy, um, just kind of a grid lattice pattern, obviously kind of a universal pattern, so it doesn't necessarily mean they're linked. So th this is the one in Kunalda, and then this is the one in Ohio. And not terribly similar, not terribly dissimilar. There's a possibility that they're done by the same 
hand and or uh, protocol or agenda behind it, which is just like gibberish soup or like um, supercomputer vomit, <laughs> algorithm vomit, possibly. Okay, and then I wanted to return to this image because it resembles some of the tool marks at Petra, I think, in Jordan. So I'll take a look at these, just kind of like this way, then this way, and we skip ahead a couple images here to um, this one. Oops, lost my spot. This one right here. So like just all curving this way and then curving back the other way. And just like, I don't know, some styli stylistic similarity there could be potentially a, um, a link there. And this is, in Jordan, this is like, um, if I'm not mistaken, like a somewhat soft sandstone. Not as, I think not as soft as the limestone in these caves, but uh, I think you can scratch this off with, uh, with a stick, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but let me go through all these real quick. Okay, so keep this in mind. These uh, these are in the Kunalda Cave in the Nullarbor Plain in Australia. And just the look of it. And serving a purpose, maybe, I don't know. Self-expression, maybe. And then we've got these these tool marks in Petra, not to mention the nonsensical, useless rectangles and stuff. Um, uh, such as this, this purposeless rectangle, this phony column, um, and then these these tool marks, which are kind of similar. So again, the idea of a calling card or a catch and throw of uh, symbols and false strategies or hallmarks of the, the deception. So multiple types of tool marks here, like this type, this type, and then just the, the weird distribution of false holes and or uh, goofy holes and doors and stuff. It's like halfway up the cliffside. And, uh, so it's a, a big shit show, nothing show type thing. And the, the tool marks, again, may be an aspect of that. So... Uh, this, like, looking like those, like, uh, what, convergent line forms, like one of those images, earlier images I showed in this video, convergent line motif, I guess it's called. Um, so again, catch and throw of, uh, symbols. Maybe I'm reading into it too much, or maybe not. But just the general look of it, the tool marks, which may or may not be phony. Um, this is a tangent, but it's related, I think. And then just these tool marks, obviously. And then also the the, f the goofy fake door, which is purposeless and just like a, basically just a, a big toy dildo. Like it's like nothing. This is just... Um, it's not... I don't think it's artistic expression. I think it's like just a, a an arbitrary detail that's so in your face that like like how could we overlook overlook this? Like just the why behind it. Like there's no function to this, you know. And then it resembles all the archways and other cultures and stuff. Um, and this this stairway just going like trailing off into nowhere this like goofy nothing door this uh goofy groove that doesn't serve a purpose this uh like it's like two inches deep this little shallow staircase thing just and then these tool marks again so if we see the same tool marks in both kunalda cave and petra and then petra is just the fake shit show then I think we should at least ask the same question. Is Kunalda Cave in the Nullarbor Plain a bogus site as well? It's possible. And I'll again reiterate that the tool marks or um, finger flutings or whatever, they don't look exactly the same. I just 
they're somewhat similar, so it's a possibility. And there's many varieties of tool marks and types uh, of uh, these tool marks or alleged tool marks in Petra and Little Petra as well, the sister site. I'll be talking about this a lot more later. Um, yeah. So, tool marks, tool marks, these. Even like this, maybe like a deceptive detail that's like just peppered in there to make the story more interesting and enticing and like it more, even more distracting. Like just an attention trap to get you to study it or to get some people to study it, maybe. Or just an arbitrary detail added for um, effect. These lines, multiple types of tool marks here. And the, uh, the idea here also is that these are gigantic hollowed out, like solid stone um, cavities. Uh, so whatever did this, I don't think it's beyond its cap capacity or capability to create a gigantic cave in the Nullarbor limestone if it wanted to and it could even make it look perfectly natural if it wanted to probably uh, I think we're dealing with very high technology here even higher than some people have supposed um, like I don't I don't think these tool marks are the hallmark of that high technology necessarily I think they're formed by the high technology to look like tool marks meaning I don't think this is like like some type of device leaving tool marks behind as a result of the the cavitying of the rock um, like so they're not legit tool marks they're planted tool marks I think I've made that point already before but it's just worth repeating um, okay let's move on more of the same blah 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 and just little idiosyncrasies and variation in the spacing again like a wonky soup of features okay and let's move on from that topic and let's now talk about um, this thing called the old telegraph station on the Nullarbor plain somewhere and it was built in the 1870s apparently and it's basically just like half a building just chilling here and it was created for like the telegraph line um, during that era when they were trying to expand communications and stuff whatever whatever but it, to me to my eye it's looking almost similar to a lot of ancient sites in like Iraq and Jordan and all these ancient Roman and Greek sites like it's almost like uh, uh, like either fake ruins or it's uh, rebranded from something else. Um, and then uh, maybe even modified. Like there's this uh, this hole right here. This is um, in some cases these holes are used to like mount mount something but uh, I don't I don't think I've talked about it a whole lot yet but I'll be talking about this a lot more the the f um, the phony hole or the facade hole or the faux um, feature here just uh, an arbitrary f square hole just plant plopped in the middle of the rock and this one's spanning two two blocks here and often and also this slot here and these may be bullet holes or natural holes or again fake holes but the the gratuitous holes thing is a huge thing in all these phony archaeological sites around the world and then I'm just kind of seeing similarities here just the the layout of the rock and the arches obviously there's some sharing of uh, archaeological style, obviously. 
across the world, but um, it's just kind of like a, a melding of uh, like stone and plaster and mortar. It's almost mm, hard to tell in some spots where the block ends and like the mortar or plaster begins, like kind of melty bullshit. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, and most of this is all like modern graffiti, blah, blah, blah. And also there's the possibility, I think that, um, this place is built like as half a building, like never was a full building. So it's like, like the top half was never even there. Like it was built as ruins whenever it was created for whatever purpose it was created. So, uh, I definitely think that's possible. That's another common thing that we see, like just like a low, low wall. Like, especially these Roman sites, it's just a low wall with, like, and that's it. Just a low wall that we're made to believe is, like, all that remains from a complete building. But in reality, I think it's just the only thing it ever was was just a low wall. <laughs> um, and this, so it might, this might just be, like, a phony ruins, like a theatrical prop. Uh, potentially and so what does that say about the Nullar War plane itself maybe something maybe a lot maybe not much uh, I you know uh, <laughs> I struggle to to put a to a nice like tie it all up in a nice bow and a nice package but I'm just spitballing, kind of. And here again, we see one of these uh, uh, gratuitous holes. And in some cases, the holes near the doorway could you could argue that they're used to hold like um, like a, a wood beam or something and uh, stuff like that. Um, a lot of these, like even this, maybe like just a gratuitous hole right here, even. Um, not just holes, but like gashes, possibly even these tool marks. You see these uh, on the surfaces of these blocks. Um, it's just striking me as like a I don't know a fake, fake something or other. And it's well, the tool marks themselves bear some similarity to the markings in the caves we've been looking at. And then just the fact that this is just chilling out there on the Nullarbor plain. Um, I, qu I question its age and I question its origin. Let's just say that. Um, the building. And then also the, pl the Nullarbor plain as well. Okay. Uh, another aspect of the Nullarbor plain worth discussing is the Mari Man. It's this big, gigantic uh, dude in the on the landscape here it's actually not on the nullarbor plain it's a ways away but it's somewhat nearby and it's um i don't know it could potentially be informative uh so here it is a couple different looks at it and i think it popped up in the 1980s if i'm not mistaken uh so it it is recent but the origins of it are not known um there's some uh, miscellaneous stories behind it, but uh, the general idea is that it's no one quite knows who made it and why. And so it's over here. So the Nullarbor is like this dude right here, this plane over here. And then the Mari man is over to the east over here. So um, a couple hundred miles away, I guess. And... Uh, why do I bring it up? Just potentially just to show what's going on in the surrounding area, the general landscape. And so here's another look at it from Google Maps. It's just a dude with, I don't know, like a stick hunting type of thing. 
um, some type of apparatus. I think it depicts an aborigine dude. And yeah, no one quite knows who made it. Oh, and it's huge, by the way. I forget how big it is, but it's very large. Uh, you can see this scale, a thousand feet is this much. So that would be about this much, that's a thousand feet. So this is a pretty massive guy. That's uh, what, it's 20,000 feet across. I think, yeah, so I think it's a couple miles tall. Um, if my math is right there. And another look at it there, another look at it. Pretty decent look at it there. And yeah, it's just like etched grooves, like grooves etched in the ground. Or, um, I forget actually, but uh, yeah, there it is. So the reason I bring it up, I guess, is it may be part of this ongoing deception of just planting goobery shit all over the place. <laughs> Uh, to perplex, like for the express purpose of perplexing and drawing, um, also possibly drawing attention into false or dead end areas of inquiry. Like you just make a bunch of false mysteries and then uh, people chase their tails trying to figure them out when this, the solution to the mystery is that it's created as a mystery that is not intended to be figured out. So that's possible with this guy. Um, so just like a, a placeholder or a dummy, dummy artwork or dummy feature uh, uh, designed to bewilder. It's possible. And then I wanted to touch on this as well. This one is on the Nuller Boar plane. It's the Ready Mix logo. It was created in 1965, if I remember correctly. And Ready mix is a type of concrete or a brand of concrete, like uh, concrete mix. And I think they had a contract to do a bunch of the roads on the Nullarbor area. And, um, and then one of their employees just kind of got it in his head to make this logo in the desert. And it's pretty large again. Uh, I don't know how big, I think it's 200 feet by 400 feet or something like that. And, um, this one, my best guess is that it's probably just uh, people doing, <laughs> uh, people being people, you know, just goofing off. Like a couple years ago, I went and drew a big dick on uh, on a hillside in toilet paper, but, um, you know, I wasn't like creating, I wasn't like part of a conspiracy or anything, you know, I was just expressing myself. So this is just some, some guy just being silly, right? So I think that's my best guess. My second best guess is that um, in light of the Mari Man and in light of um, a crop, uh, there's a particular crop circle that has like the logo of a, um, a glass company. Like they make glass bongs and stuff, like high-end glass uh, bongs like for marijuana. And their logo is... Um, they ha there was a crop circle of their logo. I, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but um, if you just Google some of those words, you, you might find it. Um, but just the idea that, uh, like we don't know who exactly who did this, um, for one, and then uh, number two, um, could potentially be, forgive me, I'm thinking on the fly here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it could be for deception purposes or just like an arbitrary detail, uh, just to, to spice things up or to bewilder or whatever by by some uh, strange um, protocol but uh that's my second best guess i think on this one my first best guess is probably that it's uh just a, a dude on a tractor or whatever um, 
but could be either. I don't know. And okay, so let's finally, <laughs> let's talk about the, the surface of the Neller bore. And so I've got a few images here. And so one thing we can observe from Google Maps and also in some of these images, I went and looked at a bunch of drone, fi uh, drone videos of the Neller bore plane, um, is this, um, this starburst pattern, like a circle with like these uh, lines coming out of it. And since this one's in the vicinity of a road, I would, um, I'm tempted to write it off, especially like all these, like certainly these lines here and like this line, yeah, probably like tractors and stuff or like when they were first making the road and stuff like that. This line here, like there, um, again, likely road related. Right over here, this bare patch here, over here. Um, again, these are all tough to say and uh, it's a tough call since it's so close to the road. So it could be any number of industrial purposes. Here's another one of those starburst pattern things. Could be uh, tooling of earth related weirdness stuff, or it could be just modern stuff. And I don't have any way of proving either at this point. I guess I could do some heavy research into the, the modern construction of these roads. Another starburst pattern here. Mm. But I wouldn't call this strong evidence just because it's right next to a road. And unfortunately, all the drone videos I looked at, um, they're all from uh, like popular tourist stops. So none of them really captured the, the, the middle of nowhere aspects of the plane because those areas are inaccessible by, by definition for the most part. Um, I'm sure if I looked a little harder, I could find like plane, airplane footage or something. So that might be helpful. Um, maybe if you happen to find some airplane footage of the Neller bore, uh, like the middle of nowhere areas with like high, high resolution video and it shows stuff like this, like not in the vicinity of a road, then that would be interesting. Um, so yeah, you could post that in the comments if you find something like that. Okay, this one, another example. So these patches here, likely for, uh, remaining from road construction. This, um, probably just a dirt road. Uh, what did I want to show in this? Oh, I think in this image, all I really wanted to show was um, this uh, patch over here, like, could be something, could be nothing. And again, the starburst pattern. This might even be the same location as the previous image. A starburst pattern, and then these parallel lines, potentially likely road related or modern activity. Okay, next one. This is uh, a drone video. And only thing I really wanna show in this is uh, this pattern alongside the road here could be nothing, could be something likely road related. Uh, this one as well. So these lines across, that's another thing. There's like crisscrossing lines, like going across the whole Nuller bore. Um, they look new ish. So, I mean, like this is almost certainly modern, something or other related to the road. And I haven't done an, as much research as I should on road construction because I know I've heard that um, uh, just the simple task of making a road on a flat surface is actually not that simple, like from an engineering perspective. It's actually quite complicated. Like, I don't know, maybe these, these lines here are like for line of sight purposes or surveying purposes. Um, uh, or, uh, or just for moving equipment before the, the road is finished. 
Uh, who knows? But yeah, that's that. Okay. And then these next couple images, just flying along the road here. And I wanted to point out these three lines. One, two, three. Again, since it's parallel to the road, I don't know that I can uh, say with confidence that I think it's artificial weirdness, but it's, it strikes me as a, a little odd, but then again, up in between over here, we have these, uh, just tons of tra tire tracks and stuff and machinery, like heavy machinery vehicles. So I think that accounts for most or all of this. So we have these parallel things, but almost certainly road related. Okay. Oops. And let's see. Oh, these, uh, these side ditches over here. Those are mildly interesting, but again, likely road related. This image I just wanted to show because this thing doesn't uh, follow the curve of the road. So it's possible that it's not associated with it, but it's possible that it still is. Okay. And this image just included it because of these ditches right here. It could be where like trucks ran off the road or something, but, um, or just from road construction. Just noting it, um, just because we don't really have good aerial or photographic stuff of stuff that's too far away from the road, or at least I didn't find any. And okay, so that is the last image I have, and this video is probably already really long, but uh, I'm going to show you a couple things in Google Earth on the Nullarbor plane. So you can see I don't have too many place marks, so you can, uh, I don't know, stick around if you want. Um, all right, so this is a little bit west of the Nullarbor, but what do we have? Very faint here, but looking to me like a straight-ish path some kind, possibly. Let me turn that back on. I think I highlighted the wrong, or, so I, a second ago I was looking at that, but I guess I'm, the line is referring to like this, something, so kind of, it's okay. Here we can. Where to go? Kind of see it there. Oops. <laughs> okay. My lack of genius is showing. I mean, either there's multiple lines, or I'm just. My eyes are honing in on the wrong thing. Uh. Potential lines, like, see, I feel like I'm not making that up. I mean, it's kind of a bare spot. Um, not that it's not natural, but it might not be. Here, kind of see something. So, could be off-roaders. Probably wasn't a strong first example to show. It's pretty faint, if it's even there. Yeah, you kind of see it there. If you look closely enough. Potentially. Okay, let's move on. That's west of the Nullarbor here. So, uh, just a general look of the area. There's these um, parallel uh, streaks looking fairly natural. Some places look looking a little more regular, not necessarily artificial, just worth pointing out. Could be 
artificial terraforming weirdness. Maybe not. Just these long parallel uh, grooves. Okay. And then these are these lines like crisscrossing the whole plane, uh, roads presumably, and then all these uh, intermediate um, roads and stuff and paths and trails. Seems like there's more than are necessary. And we have one of those starburst things here. I think we do, yeah, see so like here, and then these uh, holes radiate or lines radiating out from it. Um, so that's uh, okay. Here's another one. Um, crap. It's almost looking like a spider web, like these lines here. Could be some type of off roading deal or whatever. I don't know. Okay. What else we got? Many sites like this with lines extending out. Okay, so yeah, I'm referring to these this starburst thing. This may be like a watering hole, and these may be animal trails. Um, certainly, some of those the straight lines are not animal trails, obviously. Uh, but it makes sense that lines would converge at a watering hole from animals and they kind of look like animal trails or similar who knows all right like, I just don't know if all of these are roads, you know, these grid, gridded lines like this. Again, these whole starburst holes everywhere. Okay, let's go back to the place marks. Only more plane, largest flat plane in the world. So here, you just get a kind of general feel for it. And I think I've made most of the points I want to make already. But just showing you any interesting potential lines here. Like this stuff, this type of thing. Maybe. So we've got something here. May or may not be natural. It's some kind of path. So it could be like like the typical tool path we've been studying, or it could be off-roading vehicle or a natural feature of the landscape somehow. It's like this line maybe. Again, I'm always considering that something's just like zipping around, carving a path. That's what it kind of looks like in some cases, like zipping through here and sculpting stuff, doing some kind of operation, some kind of line there. Let's do some See if we can't get any better resolution back in history. They're basically looking the same. Okay. Let's get the place marks on and check out these ones over here. I didn't spend too long looking at the nuller board. Maybe, uh, maybe like two hours max. So I don't have a whole lot to show for it. Potential faint lines and stuff. Much of it, 
potentially natural like this this line here could be something faint parallel lines maybe eh. faint faint lines maybe about this guy, what are we looking at? Okay, so I'm saying I see a line like here, potentially. Like this. So let's uh, zoom out and check this out. So maybe like a linear edge here of some kind. And then I'm also seeing, what am I seeing over here? Like, see, it's like something is going around sculpting the edges of these, uh, these areas. Like maybe even this edge is like artificial here. So let's look at that. Maybe this. And this is a nice, actually, this one I don't think I'm making up, or I think I, I think it's there. This line across here, like that. Some type of linear aspect or feature. I see it there. There, uh, or there. Kind of see it there. Pretty faint stuff. Oh, yeah, something like that, maybe. Just the same idea that something is zipping around, sculpting the landscape. Possible markings of it there. Left edge, right edge, there. Potentially. All right. What else? Oh, up here. So I see this. Maybe. Historical photos aren't much help, but maybe some kind of linear something there. Like a continuation of this. Or this, whatever. Hmm. This guy over here. So this might be similar to one of those gashes we're seeing, like almost like a linear gash. I will say it kind of just looks like very similar to the, it kind of looks natural actually. Could go either way. So this yellow line here referring to This there, like, you see this, like that. And again, pretty faint. Something like across here, maybe Shh. looking like it. Maybe. Brian has gone crazy. <laughs> oh man. 
Let's do a random zoom. On a whim. Fruitless. I mean, I guess there's stuff I could pluck out here that kind of look like straight lines, but. It's too grainy and. Straight line, meh, maybe. Path, something. Let me hit these last place marks and I will let you go. Square. This is pretty close to a road, unfortunately, so it may just be road related. It's kind of a square. Likely is just road related. I do find this, um, this ridge interesting here. Kind of just a nice clean contour or curve to this tree line here. See it continuing here. It's kind of a awkwardly clean trajectory there like that. And continuing. <laughs> Oh, maybe a continuation of it there. Potentially. I mean, maybe it's a natural feature. This uh, clean or fairly abrupt tree line or transition here. Maybe it's like where the hillside starts to slope, like flat here, slope here, maybe. Something like that. Okay. And that might be it. Might be all I want to show. These streaks, presumably natural sand dunes. And what's this? I was just looking at the 360 photos. Okay, well, some possible straight lines and stuff in the area. Uh, the Nuller bore, I, you know, some circumstantial stuff with the caves and all that which could be indicative of weirdness. I presented what I could and I feel really good about it. <laughs> oh, wait, okay, nothing. All right, um, that's it for this video. In the next video, we will look at more sheared flat land possible examples. All right, see ya.